We've got some more differences to highlight between President Biden and the convicted felon, today being on crime and their records on it, as Tim Scott did some rounds in the media to lie in hopes of solidifying his spot as the Trump VP, while the actual VP, Kamala Harris, also laid out some differences in their records on the gun industry. So first, let's talk about the points that Tim Scott was attempting to make, and then we can end with gun violence. We must fire Joe Biden and hire Donald Trump. Poor kids today need to believe that all things are possible. And mm -hmm. unfortunately today, we're seeing violence yeah. in the streets. Now, this is just vehemently false. We saw the biggest spike in murders under the Trump administration. It was a 30% increase. All crimes spiked under Trump in 2020, reaching record highs in nearly every single category of which violent crime has been steadily dropping year over year under Biden to a near 50 year low at that. Murders are down 17% and property crimes are also down in every city with less than a 1 million population, showing that despite the stereotypes of Republicans being hard on crime, which kind of goes away when your nominee is a convicted felon and Trump's rhetoric towards criminals himself, Biden has actually been much more effective in managing and reducing crime. President Biden and I stood up to the NRA and the gun lobby. Donald Trump bowed down. After the horrors of El Paso and Dayton, the former president said he would take action. And then he folded. He failed to stand up to the gun lobby. He opposed reasonable gun safety reforms, and he cut funding to gun violence prevention. You know, Donald Trump often likes to say violent crime is up under our administration, while in fact, violent crime is now near a 50-year low. <laughs> Meanwhile, in part because of his failure to act on gun violence during President Trump's term, America saw the largest increase in the murder rate in modern history. Donald Trump in his first term commonly flip-flopped back and forth as to what his full position on gun rights and gun control was, but in the meantime did reckless things such as removing the requirement to check for mental illnesses and a background check, making it easier for them to receive guns, as well as redefining what fugitive from justice means with his DOJ to give it a much more narrow definition that allowed people with warrants to still purchase guns within their states. He kept the gun show loophole open, and as we grow closer to to this election and he's you know relying on those NRA donations his rhetoric on guns and regulations has only grown increasingly more dangerous and a second Trump term would be even worse if he were to win in November you can bet that he will repeal our bipartisan gun safety law reopen gun show loopholes and veto any new gun safety laws recall on gun violence, Donald Trump offered a clear message for the people of America. And I quote, remember when he said this, I am quoting him. He said, get over it. Trump's response to a school shooting in Iowa wasn't to point out the failure of our system, the need for stricter gun laws, what we would do moving forward to create solutions to stop this from happening. It was to suggest to the families to get over it and move on. But how does the mother move on? How do other parents move on knowing those same guns are still going to be allowed in their neighborhoods? You never move on from something like that. And that is an unempathetic response. And the system that failed them owes them at least at the bare minimum to try and fix the problem and address it at the root. But instead, Trump is now coming back even harder than he was then, promising to repeal and overturn bipartisan gun laws that Biden has passed, which is sickening, seeing as he's only doing so to pander to the big NRA donors that have owned the right for decades now. I mean, this is a bill, by the way, which only includes common sense measures such as background checks for those under the age of 21, funding and expansion of red flag laws, clarifications for firearm licensing requirements, and crisis intervention programs to address these issues before they actually happen, as well as closing the gun show loophole and further criminalizing gun trafficking, which I guess are things that are just too much for Trump. Anything that might keep kids safe, that might keep people safe in these neighborhoods is too much for Trump because it's going to take from the billions he's getting, and you know what he values. It's those big dollars from the NRA much more than the safety of your children.